everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to talk to you about my recent discovery, The Elephant in the Brain, that was recommended by Ali Abdal. And I'm going to go over five points that can help you improve your communication and your understanding of true motives behind your children's behavior. So let's get right into it. Okay. Number one, the human ego is too fragile to deal with day-to-day -day information, so it lies to itself to reduce anxiety. This is what happens when we are dealing with our children and with their anxieties. Basically, we need to understand that their ego is very fragile, just like ours. Basically, whatever drives us, drives our children. And if we're gonna understand the true meaning behind and the true motive behind their uh, anxiety, we will be able to more likely help them in their struggles. Number two, by knowing the elephant in our brain, we can work better to understand ourselves and our children, what uh, motivates them, what drives them, what gives them anxiety? What upsets them? Why do they laugh? Why do they cry? Number three, like the so-called elephant in the room, the elephant in the brain that no one wants to talk about is human selfishness. And our children are foremost and um, one of the most selfish people on earth because they only think in reality about themselves. Every cry for help, every cry for anything they need, food, uh, shelter, uh, they want to be fed, they want to be put to bed. It all relates to them being selfish, which is normal. Uh, it's a normal reaction, just like we are selfish human beings and we think mostly about ourselves. Our children are no different. So the more you're gonna understand what truly drives them, the more you'll be able to uh, relate to them and connect with them and be there for them and help them. Number four, so people uh, really do like to talk more than listen and the same thing applies to our children. They want to talk, so if you are a truly conscious parent, you need to learn how to listen. You need to let them speak out. Um, every kind of motive that goes beyond their brain that provide, that gives them anxiety, um, if you learn how to listen, if you learn how to get on their eye level and actually listen, there's going to be a big difference in the way children talk to you and the way they perceive your presence. They will know that, oh, mommy knows how to listen, mommy understands me, mommy is there to support me. So make sure before you judge your children or before you go into any kind of um, action and any kind of educational methods you're trying to impose on them, just have a look and see what truly motivates them, what is the true reason behind anything they do. Number five, the better you understand your true motives, the better you're going to understand your true insights and how you act towards your children. So you don't need to only understand what drives them, you need to understand what drives you because you were a child at some point and you were maybe mistreated at some point. So any kind of trauma that you carry on, you're going to impose on your children. That is your elephant in the brain. So make sure you are facing your own reality, you are facing your true uh, meaning for life, whatever you were taught as a child. So don't impose and don't mirror those uh, beliefs onto your children. They have their own uh, issues to deal with. So make sure you are compassionate. The authors uh, of this book incorporate um, the meaning of the actual laugh. So basically what they're trying to say is people laugh when they are uncomfortable. So when you are in a certain group of people and someone uh, laughs at your joke, in reality, they are most likely hurt. The person who is hurt the most, that's the person who laughs first and the person who's trying to hide uh, behind that laugh. So before you make any kind of joke on anyone's account, whether it's your children, whether it's your friends, whether it's your parents, make sure you know uh, the true motives behind that joke. If you're trying to say something and you want to be honest, then it's easier to just be honest with that person instead of making a joke on their account, which is going to make them feel uncomfortable. There is one line that I want to read from this book that really got me thinking about us as social creatures and I want you to pay close attention. We don't worship simply because we believe, instead we worship and believe because it helps us as social creatures. Basically what it says is that for us it's easier to believe our altruistic motives and not the true motives behind any kind of decision we make. When someone is donating to charity, they're trying to be altruistic, they want to make sure that they show to society that they are a good person, that they are donating money, that they are being part of the social life. But in reality what they're trying to say is that here, look at me, I'm such a good person, I'm donating money and you cannot do it. Another line that really struck me and I'm gonna read it for you as well. The brain has an interpreter module that manipulates information to benefit the mind's preferred version of reality. Basically, we are making up our reality. Whatever gives us comfort, whatever makes us happy, whatever gives uh, lowers our anxiety, whatever kind of uh, makes it easier for us to sustain day-to-day -day problems. So this is the reality that our brain is building for ourselves. And the same thing happens to our children. Because they're so little, their brain makes a certain reality for themselves. So they don't have to deal with certain anxiety um, day to day. Like if they don't want to go to daycare, 
uh, their brain is building this beautiful environment that they're gonna go even if it's not the best daycare even if they're not having the best of the time there but because their brain is protecting their ego they are building that particular reality so when they go to daycare they are already happy and you can help them with that you can build that reality for them you can pump them up and every morning if you drive them somewhere um, that they you know that they're not uh, too happy to go you can just pump them up on your drive you can tell them that they're gonna have a great time that it's gonna be the best day of their life that everyone loves them there that this is the best facility they can go to so make sure you pump up your kids so their reality is going to be bright and beautiful because they are children and they take literally everything that happens to them. Admitting your selfish motives isn't a socially acceptable norm. Basically, we have certain norms that we follow, all of us, so we cannot be saying uh, to people's face, oh, I want to become a doctor because I want to make more money, not because I want to save more lives, which is a more altruistic motive. Oh, I want to become a YouTuber because I want to be famous. So neither of us is actually ready to face the true meaning of our decision and why do we decide to do certain things, to follow certain paths, to uh, go after a certain career. The more we're going to understand what drives us towards a certain goal, the more we're going to understand how to get to that goal. This book also talks about how we are not much different from our primate relatives. Uh, basically, uh, back in the day when someone was trying to uh, show their dominance, they would stare people in the eye. This is the same thing and the same approach we do with our children. When we're trying to get our point across, we stare them into the eye for at least three seconds. That lets them know that we are serious about the topic we are discussing or that they need to simply listen to us. So stay tuned. In my next video, I'm going to be discussing Angelina Jolie's way of parenting. How is she doing it? Why is she doing it? And how it compares to my way of parenting. I will see you next time.